Well, iridology itself is a study of the eyes. Um, every marking, every colour, uh, fine lines, uh, even sort of uh, shadings in the iris, the shape of the iris, the shape of the pupil, the, uh, where the pupil itself is uh, centred in the iris. Of, of, often it will be sort of slightly medial, which will indicate problems. The iris itself can be slightly oval on the lateral or the upper or lower section will indicate problems. The uh, weight of the eye itself will indicate problems. Uh, just the whole general marking, shaping and so forth. But the most important uh, procedure is with the, the markings itself in the colour of the iris itself and the rest of it, it will give you an extra indication of skin tone problems, etc. There is a strong belief that uh, you can't um, tell pregnancy from the um, iris itself. I certainly do agree with that, but because the iris will show abnormalities and that's mainly what we're looking for, but often, uh, and unfortunately it does happen, and you would be careful how you would approach that with the client, often you can see where maybe the woman could be prone to uh, miscarriage and so forth. And I have detected that in, in a few t circumstances and sometimes even abnormality in the child and have sent them off to have that checked and so forth. So um, I do believe very strongly you can tell if there is going to be an abnormality, but if it's a natural, uh, normal type pregnancy, no, you would not detect it. And there's easy ways of detecting that, obviously, without having iridology anyway, but abnormalities I do feel strongly can be detected in the iris. Another one is there's a strong belief that you can't uh, uh, depict gallstones in the iris. I'm pretty sure in most cases I have always been able to pick if there's been gallstones and have done many cases uh, with gallstone problems and I do feel I can detect virtually every case of that. I don't think I have missed any over the years and I have been compiling a history for at least 26 years uh, on all, all these types of details and so forth. So there are two things that have been mentioned over the years from other practitioners that can't be uh, depicted, but I do, do feel you can. There's many things the iris will show. It's just like anything, iridology is um, something you learn as you go on. The more years you're doing it, the more you will learn from it, and a lot more to be learned yet. Huh. Right. The, the styles that I'm aware of, there's Bernard Jensen, which is um, believed to be the, um, let's say, the, the, the top iridologist in America, and I would believe so. Uh, he's a gentleman that would have to be well in his 80s. Uh, I have been to quite a few of his seminars. He comes out here uh, fairly regularly, every three, four years from memory. Uh, he's, he's a wizard of iridology, in my opinion, and I have followed uh, my earlier studies were from his work. Uh, there is a German method as well that came out later. I think um, probably, I stand to be corrected, probably 15 uh, years ago, 20 years at the most it came to my knowledge, there was a, Mary, uh, uh, sorry, a German uh, method as well. And, but the similarities, it's, there's only a couple of discrepancies and they're ve a very fine line between. I have done a lot of research into both and uh, it's, there's very little very little difference in them, but I have always followed Bernard Jensen since that's where I first started and then developed uh, from there um, into quite a few other areas of my own as well that I don't know of many people that can do iridology to the extent that um, I can. I obviously stand to be corrected on that, but there would not be many that could do as much in the iridology as what I, I have been uh, pursuing. Iridology will show many problems. Uh, some of the examples of patients that present with problems uh, would be asthma, skin problems like psoriasis, uh, eczema, dermatitis, uh, gout problems, gallstones, liver weakness, cholesterol, uh, sugar level problems, menstruation problems, headaches, sinus, um, gout I think I might have mentioned, uh, heart weakness, lung weakness, uh, asthma, um, bladder weakness, many problems, many problems patients will present with, just about virtually every problem patients will present with. And once you can, once you've done the reading, you can really ascertain where the weaknesses have come from. So once you can work out what organs are weak or what the problem is in the system, then you can set about and hopefully rectify uh, that area, uh, whether it be with vitamin therapy, manipulations, um, uh, emotional therapy, um, operations, many cases come in where I would send the patient straight off to uh, the doctor where I've detected there is a terminal problem that in no way could have been helped 
uh, through uh, natural or alternative type therapy, I would not hesitate. I send them directly to the doctor. Often women with problems um, uh, reproductive wise, I would send them off to the gynecologist immediately. So the iris will show many different types of problems. And once uh, you've got that uh, reading down, then you can ascertain whether it's something that possibly you can help with or send them to the correct therapist, whether it be alternative um, type therapy or whether it be medical as well. And that is the most important thing to recognize what you can do uh, helping that patient uh, once you've got that history or what you can't do with it. So the iris will show many, many problems and just about anything that a patient presents with um, a good iridologist should be able to ascertain where that problem is coming from and the depth of the problem. A good example is if you see somebody that's got narrowing in the fingers uh, here, that will indicate a heart weakness. But once you've done the diagnosis, you can tell to what depth the heart is giving uh, trouble. Whites in the nails shows a zinc deficiency. Once you've done the iris, then you've got a better chance of ascertaining where that mineral imbalance comes from. Ridging in the nails means calcium weakness. So if there's ridging in the nails and it's an older person, rest assured that particular patient would be lacking in calcium, hence their bone structure would be weak. So obviously you would put them on calcium or a mineral combination according to age and uh, what their temperament would be and so forth. Once again, remedies um, will relate very much so to the temperament of the patient as well. So not only will the iris show the weaknesses in the organs, it will show where the origin is a physical or an emotional problem. And many times uh, a patient might come in with a physical weakness and it's really not necessarily a physical um, cause. It can be, or an organic cause, it can be an emotional trauma that's happened previously or something they're suffering with at the time. So once you can ascertain that, then you would work on that area accordingly. And often um, vitamin therapy or chiropractic therapy will help um, let's say, get the patient back to a fairly um, normal functioning level emotional-wise, but in many cases obviously it won't, and then you would send them off to a, a practitioner that handles that particular area, or in conjunction with what you're doing what or whatever other therapy you feel would be required for that patient. The iris itself reflects the tissue tone in the body itself. So everything is reflected in the iris. So really the iris is a reflection of the internal. The same as people can diagnose from the feet, reflexology. You know, a pressure, pressure work on the feet, uh, the internal arch of the um, uh, foot left and right is um, detects weaknesses in the um, spinal column. So you can detect from uh, reflexology um, if there's a weakness in the organ, but then when you get to the iris, that will show you the depth of the problem. So it's the depth of the tissues in the iris that will show you the depth of the problem in the organ itself. Uh, so it's really the, uh, uh, the tissue itself is in the iris is reflecting. It's like a, a mirror of the uh, system itself. The color coding in the iris itself, the iris will show seven to 10 depths in the iris of tissue tone. Now the colour of the iris, what I have uh, um, worked out to try and eliminate time with the reading because otherwise you would spend hours with a patient and, and time, time is a factor in a, in a busy clinic obviously. Uh, I've colour coded uh, the diagnosis itself so eventually I might be able to put it into a computer and so forth which would certainly make it much easier long term. So the colour coding itself, if there's orange on a reading that normally means something um, uh, that could be operable in the patient's life and would be something that probably I would not handle because it means that I would send them off to the doctor or so forth immediately uh, to be operated on and so forth. Uh, if there's um, uh, arrows on a reading, it normally indic indicates that there is an hereditary terminal type problem running through the system. It doesn't necessarily mean that patient uh, would follow suit and have a terminal problem, but it really gives me an indication that the particular parent they're following could be very subject to a terminal type problem. So the system itself will show whether there is hereditary terminal type problems and whether the patient could possibly uh, be susceptible to something similar or whether they are going to acquire problems in that area. And obviously if you detect uh, certain um, problems like that, then you would handle it accordingly 
uh, with the patient, obviously with the practitioner that would handle that particular problem. So it, the iris itself will really show the depth of um, really serious operable problems and in many cases terminal problems as well. Then when you come down to the marking of pink on a diagnosis, pink doesn't mean anything dangerous in the system but it means it needs attention. So anything in pink, whether it be in the heart, whether it be something in the uh, brain area, uh, whether it be in the gallbladder, ovary, so forth, it means that organ needs attention or long term that patient could have a problem with that area and if left could end up having that then marked into orange which would then mean something operable so it's a warning sign do something about that particular area and it's normally the origin of any problem that the patient will present with. Now red crosses on a reading it's standard to have about 10 red crosses on a reading if a patient had about 20 red crosses it means that patient is very very sick and not balancing well so 10 red crosses wouldn't mean the patient has 10 problems it just means the system is not balancing well because you've got left, right, uh, upper, lower lung. So that could be four red crosses if there was four areas weak in the lung. The bronchial shows on the iris in four places. So you could have four red crosses on the bronchial. So it doesn't mean they're, they're straight off as eight, eight red crosses. It doesn't mean that they've got eight individual problems. The bronchials and lungs do relate to each other, bronchials being the filter area for the lungs. But if there's um, a red cross on an ovary, a red cross on a kidney, and a red cross on the thyroid, then that certainly indicates that patient has got a hormonal and an endocrine weakness, which once again relates to each other. And often it can be the thyroid imbalancing the kidney, or the kidney having an indirect bearing on the ovary. So it doesn't always mean 10 red crosses, uh, means that there's 10 individual problems. But uh, it means that those areas need balancing, and you try and balance the system uh, according to where the major links are. In that particular uh, example would be the thyroid adrenal ovary. There is definitely a problem in the uh, imbalance in the uh, endocrine and hormonal system. So that's mainly what we're trying to ascertain. And then often you will see where there's a, a digestive problem, uh, which would be in pink. And then straight away you would see um, uh, a red cross on scurfrin. Now scurfrin means that's the outer part of the iris and there's a dark circle around the outer color of the iris and that's what they call a scurfrin, which is your outer, your peripheral, your outer skin. And straight away that would indicate either skin weakness or um, psoriasis or pimples or congestion in the skin or fluid problems and so forth. So what you're doing is, is trying to balance out where those red crosses are arising from. And normally in some way, in many cases, they will relate back to the pink or if there's orange on the system, obviously back to the orange. Now, once you get to a pencil cross, Anything from under pencil cross is only to give me a grading of everything in the system. So pencil cross, yellow, uh, green, blue, no colour are not necessarily problems in any way in the system. But if a patient presents to me, whether it be now or let's say even five, ten years after they've had a, an iridology uh, reading and I never saw that patient after that original reading, they phoned me or came back and saw me and said, I've got this symptom or I've got that symptom, I would know from the iridology itself exactly where the weaknesses are in the system but also what areas could never give trouble in their particular system. So if they gave me, um, a patient often will phone from the country that I, um, I haven't seen for years and I wouldn't even remember who they are. Now by pulling out their chart it, on the phone, uh, if they were relating a particular uh, problem, I would have a very strong indication as to where that problem is arising from and most symptoms that patients present with will only relate to one or three organs. So once we've got what symptom they're uh, complaining of, uh, all we have to do then is just check the uh, reading to see which ones show against that. So often if a patient uh, complains of a skin problem, it might be a sugar imbalance causing it. it, might not be anything to do with a toxic bloodstream or so forth. So once uh, a patient um, can present, present me with a problem, uh, I can detect very quickly from the reading where that origin is coming from. And once you find the origin, you treat, obviously, the uh, cause of the problem. Diagnosis with Jan Shido. Um, on the reading, as I did mention uh, earlier, there was no, uh, I could not see any susceptibil susceptibility to any major operable problems and so forth. Uh, pink on the reading indicated, um, which was on digestive system and transverse colon, uh, the digestive system was very, very toxic. A, a fairly dark brown iris, so there's a lot of green starting to come through in the iris itself. 
um, over a period of time. So I do feel before um, um, my examination of Mrs. Shado, I do feel she's probably been on a fairly good diet for years and been looking after herself because the system itself would have appeared to have been a much darker iris prior to me reading it. But there's still a lot of toxins and waste in the digestive system and the transverse colon definitely showed a weakness uh, in it that they, as I mentioned earlier, they, I do feel she's got a dropped um, transverse colon and should have uh, an x-ray uh, taken to check that. So I'd like to see, have a look at that further or get the doctors to check that because I think the trans transverse colon has dropped considerably, but I do feel that um, I could help tone that for her. Um, as she did mention after the reading, there had been an operation, uh, as I had detected in the iris, on the colon, so part of the colon has been removed. So no matter what you did for that particular patient, she's obviously always going to have a digestive weakness, but I do feel we'd be able to help her considerably and probably get her back to about a 90%. Um, a good functioning digestive system, let's say, without flatulence, um, you know, constipation, uh, wind, yeah, flatulence, wind, so forth, and bloating, which is what she's suffering. Um, her headaches, it showed in the neck on, on a red cross, which means the neck is not a major structural problem, but when it's a red cross, it means there's a lot of tension or that there's a slight uh, misalignment in that area. So um, she certainly doesn't need medication for headaches as such, in my opinion. I think, as I said earlier, that maybe six, maybe eight, ten um, good chiropractic therapies uh, or osteopathic therapy on her neck would um, probably alleviate the migraines and so forth. There's definitely nothing in the brain area that would indicate tumours or that type of condition or anything that would create headaches. There, um, even her uh, symptoms don't present with something to that degree. But the iris would show me if there was going to be, uh, if or if there was uh, any deep-seated uh, problem or let's say a tumour or something in the brain. So with the organs itself, the heart is definitely um, showing as a weakness in a red cross. Once again, red crosses don't mean that it's in a, in, in a danger level in any way but it really should be watched throughout her life and as proven by the oridology as she confirmed afterwards that her grandmother on her father's side and the father both died around the 50 mark um, uh, with heart problems. I do not feel Jan will go around that age but uh, I do feel she could have problems later in life and should watch the heart um, closely over a period of time. Her left adrenal and kidney are weak which is throwing her hormonal system the left kidney has a bearing on the uh, um, her blood pressure and over a period of time if the kidney uh, weakened then that would weaken the blood pressure even more so and in turn could then weaken the heart. So by strengthening the kidney, strengthening the heart would definitely or hopefully uh, regulate her blood pressure and uh, once again by strengthening the adrenal and kidney would hopefully um, slow down the uh, uh, deterioration level in the heart itself. Um, her skin tone is just starting to age. She's in mid mid forties, so that obviously would be an aging process starting. But by detoxifying the uh, system, strengthening the uh, capillary walls in the heart uh, throughout the system, she did mention as well surface veins, which wasn't a big problem. It was worrying her a lot, but in the iris it didn't show as being a major problem. But by strengthening the heart, would even hopefully help uh, strengthen the capillary walls for her and slow down once again the deterioration in that area. Um, she mentioned that her eyesight as well was um, deteriorating um, after we finished the reading and uh, I did not see any major problems uh, with the eyes. I think it's just a normal ageing process and often by having the neck uh, manipulated or, or even just traction work and massage work on the neck will help slow down the deterioration in the, uh, or the ageing process of eyesight as such but I didn't detect any major problem. She mentioned sinus problems. I feel most of that was um, contributing to uh, uh, straight out congestion in the digestive system and congesting the bronchioles. I didn't see any major lung weakness uh, as such. Overall, her lungs themselves seemed to be quite strong. Her spleen appeared to be uh, normal, so I didn't feel there was any uh, imbalance in the um, blood levels in any way. Her pancreas was normal. I didn't feel there was any sugar imbalance, uh, even though she has got a sweet tooth at times. I do think that relates to that hormonal imbalance. Her emotional level, as I mentioned, I think she's um, uh, well balanced emotional wise, uh, but because the adrenal, that left adrenal is weak, often that will uh, weaken the nerve system and I think she is a, a worrier. She just appears to be a general worrier, even though to look at her today, she would not betray that. But I, from the reading, I just felt she lived on a nerve system uh, far too much. 
and uh, but it's it's not a deep seated psychological problem. She didn't have psychological problems. Many cases that come in would be a psychological problem, uh, and that would show in the brain as well if she was prone to suicide. She doesn't have those tendencies, but I said underline. She's a worrier. It does show in the nerve rings, even though they're pencil. There was a strong feeling coming that uh, she puts on a good front, uh, but she lives on the nerves, and her energy levels could be better because of that. She's depleting emotional-wise, which is depleting her physical nerve energy. It's not so much a physical weakness, but the left adrenal would attribute to that. Um, I don't think there's much else really to say on that. That would give us a good a good brief summary of what I found in the diagnosis. So the major points on that is a trans, uh, drop transverse colon, uh, a toxic uh, digestive system antagonizing bronchioles, um, weak uh, left ovary with definitely a suggestion of maybe cyst forming again and should be checked. And I, I would, uh, in, if it was me, I would be putting her on, um, uh, if she's a patient of mine, I would put her on several therapies to help stop that formation but obviously if it didn't on the iris check in three months time i would then send her to a gynecologist to have a check further since there was a history of it previously um as i mentioned before long term i think heart could be her problem and obviously the blood pressure should be monitored and heart every five ten years um I, if, if she was my patient i would be monitoring it and if i was worried in any way i would not hesitate to get the doctors to check that as well i feel the uh, menopause problems we can correct by balancing the kidney and putting her on homeopathic remedies for that, and that would not take long for that area to um, uh, rectify itself, so it makes it much easier to go through that change for her. Uh, her skin tone, as I mentioned, will improve by detoxifying and strengthening papillary walls. I feel that sort of covers fairly, fairly briefly on, on her reading. With a reading, as it normally does take two hours, so I would be going into a, even a lot more depth, but. I think that gives us um, the major points with Mrs. Shido. Well, the colour of the iris is, um, there's two basic colours, blue and brown iris uh, people. Brown iris, obviously, the darker the colour, the more difficult to read, because if you've got a dark, um, a deep brown on a black, the, uh, the difference is obviously um, uh, minor. A blue iris, obviously, a, a light blue iris is much easier to read, because if you get a black or a, a a dark brown or a brownish marking, it's easier to read. Uh, a blue iris person produces acid in their system, uh, so they have a tendency to be drying of skin, arthritis, so forth. A brown iris person produces mucus, they have oilier skin, uh, the body oils better internal, external wise, so they have a, a tendency for more for rheumatism type problems, uh, bronchial problems, that type of thing, whereas a, an acid system, a blue iris, will be a more drying, they end up with uh, emphysema, thing, emphysema, things like that, because they, uh, the uh, capillaries dry out much quicker. Just as a briefing on some of the things, uh, the differences. There's many different colours between blue and brown irises. Uh, if there's a, a combination in the iris of mucus and acid, then you've got a more complicated uh, reading, a more complicated system, in other words. So usually I find um, that particular iris is it's more difficult to read, and usually you'll find that a patient has a a more sort of very cross-section of problems in the system to what you would have with a true blue iris or a true brown iris. They're definitely uh, a lot simpler to read and the system is a lot less complicated in, in my opinion with that. Uh, another thing is the texture of the iris itself, the depth of the iris, uh, will depict or determine the problems in the system and the, the practitioner themselves reading the iris uh, has to be able to make a judgment fairly quickly on each individual for the depth of the colouring is very important and that is one of the hardest things for an iridolo iridologist or someone learning iridology to be able to ascertain the level and when I'm teaching the boys that is the most difficult thing for them to be able to get uh, a true picture in their mind of what the density of colours mean and so forth and the markings and many markings in the iris don't only um, mean uh, particular weaknesses or strengths in that patient, often those markings are hereditary problems as well. A lot of iridologists read markings in the iris and think that it is um, a weakness in that particular patient. Not necessarily. It can be a weakness hereditary-wise, which means it doesn't mean that particular patient is going to suffer those problems. And that's what, uh, with iridology, you want to be able to determine what the particular patient is suffering what is acquired, what is hereditary. And once you can work that out, then you can get a true mapping of what that patient is obviously suffering. 
Okay, if you get a patient that's really um, fair haired, blonde, let's say a 21 year old, good looking blonde, uh, hasn't dyed her hair, and um, really nice skin tone, good shape, uh, that really nice, healthy, um, bright blue eyes. Uh, you see that particular girl around that mid 40s, you'll find in many cases she has aged much quicker than a dark haired uh, woman with dark brown eyes because the skin oils. Oily, mucus producing um, uh, systems have a tendency not to age uh, as fast as what an acid producing system will be because the acid really dries out the skin and it seems to dry the internal as well. Obviously, anything internal wise will affect the external. So, if you see someone with dry skin or poor tone external wise, whether it be a fluid problem, drying of skin, psoriasis, uh, pimples, any of these problems will indicate something is wrong on the internal uh, skin or fascia as well. So yes, a, a blue iris person has a tendency for their skin to dry and they have a tendency to age much faster than a brown iris um, person because of the oily skin. Hereditary is something that I have developed over the years. Now, obviously I think that's something that's going to take quite a few years before we're going to see recognition in any way on that because of, uh, as I said to my knowledge, there, there would be very few people doing hereditary type conditions in the iris. I have kept all my notes um, from the year I opened up um, as a practitioner with iridology and over those years I have met, had many people coming back, especially uh, people from 10 years plus or back 10 years, uh, relating uh, certain um, problems and whether it be emotional or physical that I have mentioned to them and problems in relation to their parents as well or their children and so forth uh, that have definitely come true from what I have read on the iris and there's many many cases of that so really it's only something that can be proven over a period of time but you never stop proving it to yourself I always tell the patients to come back and please tell me uh, over a period of time if these things do come true so really it is something that you can only uh, only time is going to prove whether that is true or false, but I really know within my heart it is really true. I have really proven it over and over again, even though 26 years is not that many years in practice to prove something like that, that it is long enough to really know whether it works or whether it does not work. And there's many patients that come back and relate that these things have uh, arisen at, and, and virtually at the age that I have said. I feel definitely 95% accuracy. I really do. And I do not think I'm exaggerating on that. And once again, I really have proven that over a period of time. Uh, it's very difficult to put a percentage on that, obviously. But uh, I do feel, I think iridology is um, an area that uh, over the years uh, will be found to become uh, a very valuable diagnostic procedure uh, in many fields, hopefully eventually. Uh, who knows, it might um, be able to be used in conjunction with the doctors. And I, I do have quite a few medical practitioners sending me patients. No problem. Um, with um, blood tests and so forth. So there is, is room for error in every area, including iridology. Iridology can only be as good as a reader, and it's only the time as experience with all of us. We never stop learning, and you learn from each patient. But as I said, I do have quite a few practitioners sending me um, uh, patients from, uh, let's say, orthodox medicine as well as obviously uh, alternative type medicine uh, for many different problems, um, deep-seated problems and even terminal type problems. And it will give some indication of where that problem is arising from. There was a very good example of that a few years ago uh, with a patient that had a spleen problem and the patient presented um, feeling that he did have terminal problems and uh, they, the tests um, at the hospital uh, could not, um, they could not detect any problem at all. A medical practitioner sent that patient to me, this will be at least 10, maybe 12 years ago, sent that patient to me and um, after doing the reading, I sent that patient back to the doctor and I did feel that patient had a terminal problem in the uh, spleen and they did operate on that spleen from that diagnosis. And there's another case of a lady that uh, I did a reading for and uh, one of the hospitals in Sydney um, did examine her afterwards and I found there was a cyst on the spinal cord in the right C1 um, area of the uh, spinal cord and um, 
it was wrapping around it and she had had tests and no one had been able to detect it. That lady came to me, I did detect it, she went back to the hospital uh, or back to her doctor and she was operated on within seven days and I did feel she would have died if she hadn't gone to the medical practitioners immediately with that problem and some of these things have been uh, noted by the doctor. So there's many cases that we can help, it doesn't mean we can help with everything, but it certainly will give us an indication of some of these areas. So I said, with all of us, um, it is a learning ground for these types of problems. So iridology will really show many problems that can only be as good as a reader, and it's uh, at this time and experience that will, will prove that. Well, I think mainly the most important thing, as you would be well aware of, that uh, not to plant thoughts. If someone has uh, a severe heart problem, you're not going to tell them that they have got a severe heart problem. Obviously, they could go home and will themselves into having a heart problem. They can talk themselves into it. And the fright of it, even if they're not talking themselves into it, the fright of it would be enough. So you've got to try and um, obviously buff it as much as you can. You don't want to frighten the patient, be as, but be as honest as you can with the patient. Or if you get an 80-year-old that you feel in some way is um, probably only going to be here for a couple of years longer on this earth, you're certainly not going to say that in two years' time you're no longer going to be with us because that poor lady would go home and, uh, and start making out a will and decide she's going to go in two years' time. So you do have to obviously be careful depending on the particular emotional level of that patient. And once again, um, with all these things, that's just a discretion of the practitioner. But um, obviously one person um, can handle the truth more than another but you certainly don't want to plant um, thoughts that will leave psychological problems there for the patient. So you, you do have to uh, be careful what, what you do say to the patient, obviously. Future of iridology, I think, will take at least another 10, 20 years, who knows, to become sort of a household name. A good example of that is when I first started practice, uh, patients would come in uh, even for straightforward chiropractic type therapy and um, we were treated as quacks, witch doctors, whatever, and people were really frightened of us. And it would take you at least 15 minutes to even get their confidence before you would even uh, start taking details with the patient. They were really very wary and some very frightened of it. Still some people are very wary of it, but chiropractic over, I've seen a big change in my 25 years of practice or 26 years of practice uh, with people now Chiropractic is becoming a household name, and I'm hoping in 10 to 20 years, once there's a few more really good iridologists in the field, that uh, iridology will come in underneath as a very valuable diagnostic procedure for alternative type medicine, hopefully eventually uh, to work in conjunction with the uh, doctors. But obviously that, that would be a fair way off yet, I would imagine.